the 80th anniversary memorial for Pitt, the military circus elephant that died on August 6, 1943. I found it really ironic last night that it was lightning and thundering so heavy and then today we're celebrating her. So it's kind of ironic that it's on the around that time. So in well, thank you all for coming today. Uh, I uh, we did this 30 years ago, 1993. I had a little bit more hair back then and uh, we had quite a turnout. Uh, we had about two dozen, maybe three dozen people at that time, 30 years ago in 1993, who actually were at the circus the day that Pitt died, that they were kids. And, uh, and I'm sure that we, we, many of those people aren't with us anymore 30 years later. But that was uh, our first commemoration. And we, uh, John Barrows, the, the uh, Dillon Tribune editor, uh, arranged to have the local circus that was coming in just before the uh, Labor Day uh, in August. He, uh, he had the, the elephants lined up here. They, they laid a wreath with the elephant on the grave. So we're back. Uh, and I, I didn't know we would be back uh, uh, four score you know, years after this elephant died 80 years ago. But I thought I'd just give you a f few words about, you know, I've done the, some history on this elephant and, and the troop that it was part of. And there's some things on this gravestone here, the marker that are true, and some of them that are sort of stretching the truth because this was circuses, you know, and it says she was 102 years old. Well, more like 50 because these elephants, Pitt and three others came from Hamburg, Germany in 1900. They came on a shipment uh, of four elephants plus the trainer, the German trainer. So they were trained in German to, you know, they were about five to seven years old when baby elephants come to be uh, purchased. And then they had to learn English. So these were bilingual <laughs> elephants, you might say. They started out with, with German, knowing what German was, but they didn't know the English commands and they had to look, relearn the, how to do things on, in English. But uh, they were brought from the, uh, the Hagenbeck Zoo in Hamburg, Germany. And I ran into a gentleman a couple of months ago in Scotland from Ham Hamburg and I told him this story. And he said, by the way, it's not how you're saying it. It's Hagenbeck, Hagenbeck. Not Hagenbeck, it looks like Hagenbeck to me, so that's what I keep saying, but that's the correct way of saying this, this fellow who was Hagenbeck Wallace was a, a traveling menagerie circus, and they were well known as providers of all kinds of, of um, exotic animals like elephants. But it was interesting to me that they actually provided a, for the first year, for the first few months that, that year. That, that year in 1900 provided the uh, trainer to come out there in July and help them on their taking care of these young elephants. Anyway, the, the, the circus ended after, in 1911, the John Robinson Circus is what that was called. The John Rob and you see the name John Robinson Military Elephants. Well, around that time, uh, you know, 
they were now going to be elephants just owned by the Robinson family. In Terrace Park is where their estate was, just outside of Cincinnati, just on the east side. So they toured around with five elephants initially. Five elephants was uh, all female Asian elephants. And then they, uh, one of them accidentally uh, had a little bit of a, a rampage over there in Hoboken, New Jersey and, and jumped back off of the pier and into the water and drowned. So they were, they were down to four elephants that were becoming what we call the, the John Robinson military elephants. And they were performing in vaudeville and different uh, venues, indoors and outdoors. They were even, a, there's a billing of their names right beside W.C. Fields, which is the famous name of a, a comedian back in, those, in that era of time. So they were in L.A. for a while in and, 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 uh, Southern California at the Selig uh, Zoo and Selig Polyscope was just starting silent movies. And he was using lots of these animals like elephants. You see pictures in the archives in Cincinnati, all dressed up and with the background looking like that must have been a movie set. So these, uh, these elephants were movie stars. They, they got into silent movies. We don't know which ones, because how would you look at silent movies? Most of them are probably gone. But uh, so they were there for about four years. They took a, uh, about a four month stint down in Havana, Cuba. They shipped them from Key West across the ocean, uh, 100 miles to get to Havana, Cuba. But John Robinson did not like being on on big boats out in the ocean and the people were seasick just that 100 miles for that day of, of, of cruising. So he never went any foreign places again, even though he was offered to go places like Central America and Mexico with his elephants. He never took them abroad. But the John Robinson Circus for many years was a wagon circus going from town to town and mostly in the south where the weather's better and longer season. But it wasn't until the 1800s, 1800, 80 was when Dillon, Montana had its first railroad come to this, it was short line, the, the narrow gauge railroad, the Utah and Northern. And it went all the way through Dillon and up to Butte and, and Deer Lodge. And three years later, 1883, the first circus came here and it was the John Robinson Circus. But 1883 is 10 years before Pitt was even born. They had a lot, of, they had a, a half a dozen elephants, one of which was Chief the Elephant that uh, notorious for having killed its, his owner, John King in North, in, in North Carolina. So that elephant was here. And I got to see Chief's uh, skeleton just last month uh, in the basement of one of the, the archival buildings over in Cincinnati. They kept the skeleton and had it erected. So anyway, Pitt uh, had a tremendous, uh, you know, cross-country touring with the John Robinson Circus because of these rail railroads they could go everywhere like little towns like Dillon where thousands of people would flock to see the very first circus in the Montana Territory in 1883 the very first elephants to set foot here that was the John Robinson Circus but that was before Pitt Pitt didn't come until 1900 so that's um, a little bit of a some snippets about the life of of this elephant and it was after the three other elephants had died, that she was the very last one that was given a gift to the Cole Brothers Circus. And that was a big circus during World War II. Well, I should have said, World War I was going on when the so-called military, Rob, John Robinson military elephants did their little skit, pulling the canyon, firing a cannon and raising the flag and an elephant falls down and you know the, the nurse comes over and the nurse elephant with a little red cross on her forehead comes over.
Looking for Made in Montana food products? Look no further than Town and Country Foods of Dillon. On the forehead comes over. So the, they were doing a skit, a patriotic skit about about the war years in World War One. World War Two is when Pitt came here in 1943, in the middle of World War Two, uh, a very somber time. We didn't know whether who was going to win that war back at that time. So the so there was a nice uh, respite from that, and uh, they were waiting to come into the tent for, this, uh, for the, the Ballet of the Elephants. Three ring circus, three different performing groups on three rings were going to have a woman sitting on the front of the elephants, and of the group of elephants, and Pitt was at the door waiting with her troop. A uh, big storm came in at that moment. It was lightning struck, and all the elephants fell to the ground in that troop along with the, some of the trainers that were with them, fell to the ground from this lightning strike, but only Pitt failed to get up. And so she lay here and, and the circus had to go on. This show goes on. They went south into Idaho, but they left money for this gravestone and arranged for it to be buried. And they just dug a, a ditch right beside her and, and, and pushed her in and buried her here the next day. That was a Friday, the 3rd of August, and, and it was Saturday when people have pictures at the at our county museum. Have pictures of people's own black and white shots of, of the day they buried Pitt on on the seventh um, of August. So that's my story. <laughs> I've looked. Uh, at, there is a, a website I can tell you. If you look at Terrace Park Historical Society, you can actually see the slideshow I put together on this. And it, you can click through it because it's right there, posted on Terrace Park. Historical Society. If you forget that, you can give me a call and I can repeat that for you. But um, and I guess with that, oh, by the way, um, we, like I said, last time we met, we had at least two dozen, maybe three dozen people who were actually kids at the circus. Uh, just a show of hands, is any anybody at that circus? Uh, um, when I was asked to do this, I thought, oh, how fun. What a quirky thing. And it was about 30 seconds later, I thought, ooh, this is a really huge responsibility. And I realized the enormity of what I would say and how to approach this. And so I'm hoping that I am giving Pitt the respect um, that she deserves. Thank you all for being here. All of us are creatures of this great earth, connected in ways that often cannot be explained, but we do feel the connection. We know it exists, and we know it is much larger than us. Animals have souls that are pure. They share a deep attachment to the spirit. They don't care about status or money or appearance. Elephants are part of this connection. They are big, they are strong and they are agile. They are intelligent. They have an extraordinary memory, are nurturing, loyal, and protective of their families. They honor and remember the bond which ties them all together. There's a lot of symbolism represented by this strong animal. They are known to exemplify good fortune, power, strength, stability, wisdom, loyalty, health, happiness, and spiritual well-being. Not only are elephants among the most intelligent animals, they also appear to have complex death rituals. They've been observed covering bodies with leaves and branches and will often investigate bones. Elephants will also stop to inspect a body that isn't from their own herd. A herd of elephants marched 12 hours to the house of a man that had died, its grave. And when you hear them tell the story, you just want to be one of those kids. He would line them up and march them out here, and they would walk around the grave, and he would tell the story of Pitt. Joe Womack led his own memory walk in honor of Pitt. Bill Cottom was a child on this day 80 years ago. His dad had taken him to see the circus. He thinks it may have been a three ring circus and that they were seated near the middle ring and he was excited. 
They had to move over a little when the raindrops found a way through the tent and were dripping on their heads. No one told them that an elephant had been struck by lightning during the earlier storm. And when the show was over, they had to walk around her still body. The next day, he remembers returning to these fairgrounds as large equipment made a place for Pitt. He said a lot of kids were there that day. To watch it was something. It was something they'd never seen before, and they knew it was something they would probably never witness again. Elephants are known for their long lifespans and close familial bonds. So the death of an elephant is always a deeply sad event. In the wild, elephants show their grief by touching and caressing the dead body with their trunks. Pitt, you graced this earth with your beauty. You were an entertainer and brought joy to others. When you were called home from this earth, your journey to the afterlife was guided by light and angels in our Creator, and I am certain you were welcomed with open arms. Your soul left Dylan, and in turn, the people of Dylan have watched over your final resting place with respect and dignity. When a member of the herd passes, elephants do mourn. They gather around, extend their trunks, and gently touch the tusks of their fallen friend. It's their ritual. It's how they heal. It is sad, and it is beautiful. Rest in peace, Pitt.